Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and today I'm going to do a standalone video on the Black Mage. In this video, we are going to go over the important details you need to be a successful Black Mage, including single target rotation, AoE rotation, common uses for their utility, and stats. Keep in mind that this entire guide will be based on being maximum level as a Black Mage. So, let's get started. The Black Mage is a ranged caster that has the unique ability of infinitely managing their MP. If handled correctly, not only does the Black Mage draw from an infinite pool of resources to deal damage, but the damage they deal is quite high. So first off is their single target rotation, and don't worry, this one isn't complicated. Black Mages have three elements of spells that they cast, fire, lightning, and ice. Balancing the time you spend casting each of these elements while carefully watching your MP is the key to success. You'll always want to start every fight with one of your three thunder spells, preferably thunder three. While you may start the fight with Thunder 3, it is not the only Thunder spell you use. We'll get more into the technicalities of that a little bit later. Then you move on to casting Fire 3. This will immediately grant you 3 stacks of Astral Fire, which doubles all of the fire damage you deal while in this form, when at 3 stacks that is, while also doubling your MP cost. Additionally, you can no longer generate MP while in this form, and Ice spells have their MP cost significantly reduced. Once Thunder is applied, and you have these three stacks of fire three, begin spamming fire one. Every once in a while, you will obtain a proc called fire starter, which makes your next fire three instant cast and cost no MP. Using these when they proc is important. However, due to the travel time of fire one, you'll likely be in the middle of another fire cast when fire starter procs. Do not cancel your current fire cast to use a fire starter proc. I know it seems silly to waste the potential for another fire starter proc by not using it before casting fire again, but the amount of DPS you lose either A, interrupting yourself to use fire starter, or B, waiting for your fire animation to land to see if you get a proc, adds up over the course of an entire fight. So just use it after your next fire cast and you should be fine. Also, as you can see here, do not spam cast fire 3 either. Not only will your MP run short, but when your MP runs short and you need to do this next part of the rotation, you're actually losing a lot of damage. Eventually, you will begin running low on MP, and by eventually, I mean very, very quickly. Now, this is the part of Black Mage that requires paying attention. First, you want to ensure that you have enough MP to cast Blizzard 3 when you are nearly out of MP in Astral Fire form which, while in Astral Fire form, is 79 MP, or at least for me it was, without any additional piety or MP stat anywhere. Switching forms using Blizzard 3 allows you to instantly go to 3 stacks of Umbral Ice, which will charge your MP back to full in about 2 ticks, or 4 to 6 seconds depending on when it was actually applied. During this time, the second thing you want to do requires the careful timing of your MP, and that's reapplying your Thunder Dot. Thunder 1, 2, and 3 are all designed to have the exact same damage over time potency, so in most circumstances they can be overwritten. With the correct timing on your remaining MP pool, it is possible to cast one Thunder 3 in the time it takes for your MP to recharge to full. However, should your spell speed or MP be too low, you can also use Thunder 1 or Thunder 2 to ensure that you are at least able to get a dot up during that Blizzard 3 form quickly enough before reaching full MP. Just as you are reaching full MP, you want to switch back to Fire Form using Fire 3 and repeat this cycle over and over again. Be sure to immediately expend all Fire Starter or Thundercloud procs should the fight be single target. If they are well timed, you can use them to burst down important targets as well. One thing you definitely don't want to do is save a Fire Starter proc for getting back into your Astral Fire form. When you're in Umbral Ice form, it greatly reduces the casting time for your fire spells. So Fire 3 will already be so quick of a cast, you might as well only use your fire starter procs while you are actually in Astral Fire form. Thundercloud procs are unaffected by form, use them as they occur. The most important part of this is knowing exactly how many fires you can cast before you need to switch back to Ice form and then reapply the Thunder Dot. Then, you need to know which Thunder spell you will have the MP and spell speed to cast quickly enough. Get this down based on your own individual gear level, and you should do fine on Black Mage's single target DPS. You're probably wondering why I haven't mentioned Flare yet. Don't worry, we'll get to that. Before that though, let's talk about the AoE rotations. Black Mage is pretty easy with this one, as are most jobs in the game really. 
Simply put, replace Fire 1 spam with Fire 2 in your rotation. Now I know you have Blizzard 2 as well, and in most optimal circumstances, when you switch over to Ice Form, you should cast it once or twice, if you are nearby to the enemy, since you do need to be in melee range really for it to hit them. However, you still want to use Blizzard 3 to swap into Umbral Ice Form. So forego the use of Thunder entirely when AoEing. Use Fire 3 and Blizzard 3 to switch forms with full stacks just as you were in the single target rotation, and ensure that you have the MP for Blizzard 3 when you're done casting your Fire Form spells, which, remember, will be Fire 2, so it may not be the same as it was when you were Fire 1 spamming. If you are within the proximity of the enemies, you are AoEing, you may use one or two Blizzard 2s, but be sure that you switch back to Fire Form using Fire 3 to continue your Fire 2 spam as quickly as possible once you hit full MP. Avoid using Freeze at all. It does really, really bad damage. Now we'll talk about Flare, because this fits into both rotations in an odd place. Flare deals a lot of damage in a really small AoE, which is its primary purpose. As opposed to Freeze's AoE utility, Flare is your AoE damage. However, it has a super long cast time and eats all of your MP, leaving you with nothing to cast Blizzard 3 afterwards. This makes it a terrible choice to cast in most circumstances. However, should you already be in Astral Fire 3, and you have both Swift Cast and Convert available to you, using it can prove extremely useful when bursting down one or several targets, and that might mean the difference between life or death. So that is, when you use Flare, whether you want to do single target or AoE, ensure that you are already in Astral Fire 3 and that you have both Swift Cast and Convert available. If you are on the last 5% or so of a really important boss, it's also completely okay to simply Swift Cast Flare and then transpose Thunder 3 and then go back into Fire 3 once your MP is full. Basically, don't use it without at least Swift Cast or Astral Fire 3. So I very briefly mentioned Transpose there, and you're probably wondering why I never mentioned it throughout the entire single target rotation explanation, and that is because you generally only want to use it as your oh crap button, really, that's what I mean. Um, you never want to go all the way down to 0 MP and then Transpose, obviously other than in the case of Flare where you don't have Convert available, and that is because it will take significantly longer for you to get out of Umbral Ice form, it takes three or four ticks for your MP to come all the way back with only one stack of Umbral Ice, and that's all you'll get from Transpose. You're actually losing more time in Fire Form by going that low and then waiting for the long cast time to get you all the way back to full MP. So just use it in case you have no MP for Blizzard 3 to switch forms. It's really the only time that you're ever going to use it. You also have Scathe, which acts as a mobile damage dealer but this should be your last resort for damage. The key to doing the most damage as a Black Mage is to minimize the time you spend moving, and you have just the tool to do that, Ethereal Manipulation. Using this to properly reposition yourself without physically moving allows you to go from doing your biggest nuke in one location and doing it in another location in a heartbeat. You just need to be sure you don't use Ethereal Manipulation into something like a landslide, for example. Also, it's on a 30 second cooldown, so don't get me wrong, there are still plenty of mechanics where you're going to still physically need to run out of them. However, every 30 seconds, not needing to run to dodge something makes life much sweeter. The rest of Black Mage's kit focuses on raid utility and personal defenses. For example, Blizzard 2 and Freeze's primary functions are to bind targets in place. Also, Blizzard, the initial one, has a heavy on it, which will reduce an enemy's movement speed. This can also be extremely helpful. Mana Wall and Mana Ward grant you ways to reduce your incoming damage. Mana Wall in the way of physical, while Mana Ward in the way of magical. While the Pocket to Stasis allows you to reduce another party member's oncoming magical damage, assuming it matches one of the three elements listed in the ability. Sleep can, can take care of big trash pulls or adds and allow your raid time to deal with them. This is assuming that you're actually on bosses that have adds that can be slept or are even important or even attacking you. And Lethargy can slow a high priority target's movement speed. Keep in mind that the slow from Lethargy does not stack with the slow from Blizzard. So it's usually just one or the other. However, it does stack with Miasma Slow. These spells don't effectively increase your damage, but they increase your utility when it comes to learning new fights and being a team player. So, with all that out of the way, let's talk about stats. I always put my 30 points into int for damage for Black Mage. Now, Piety and Vit are generally not important and won't make any influential changes on the way you play. 
I've heard of some black mages putting a few points into piety to ensure that when they switch to umbral ice, they can use thunder three, but you don't need to add piety to make adjustments to your thunder cast. Just use thunder two should be having an MP be an issue for thunder three. The only difference between the thunder spell is dot duration, which is about three seconds per tier with tier one being 18 seconds, tier two being 21 seconds and tier three being 24 seconds and about 10 or 20 potency to their initial damage. The dot damage and the thundercloud procs are all the same regardless of which thunder you're using. As for stats from gear, you want your accuracy to sit somewhere around 430 to 450, depending on the level of content you are doing. This number requirement will go up with future patches introducing more difficult content. After that, your stats are weighed fairly equally, however that's only in theory, so let's go over each of the stats. Determination is by far the biggest increase to your raw damage numbers, both crit and non-crit, but is extremely difficult to obtain a lot of. Critical hit rate doesn't directly influence any of your abilities or the way you play, but it does make your spells crit more often. Can't ever complain about that. It would seem that spell speed has some of the highest influence on your overall kit. I mean, more spell speed equals more fire cast equals more fire starter procs. It also influences how quickly you can switch to Umbral Ice, cast the Thunder Spell, and switch back to Astral Fire. However, you require far more spell speed to obtain benefits than any other stat in the game. And of course, without forgetting about it, Intelligence, just good for you, increases your damage, no problems with that, just get as much of it as you can. So the safe, safest stat priority to go with is Intelligence, then Accuracy until you reach a good number, Determination, critical hit rate, with spell speed being the least important. If, if you have any input on this, feel free to enter it in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my Black Mage job overview. It's a really simple job, so if you are looking to master one of the ranged damage dealers, Black Mage is definitely a good job to look at. For more information on how it stacks up against other jobs, check out my Black Mage vs. Summoner video on my channel, as well as some individual videos about some of the other damage dealing jobs such as Summoners, their pets, and Bards. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favorite, subscribe, and share for more Final Fantasy XIV information and videos. Also, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can ask me questions or make recommendations for videos. I love interacting with my subscriber base. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Until next time, take care.